In this video, we will use a binary counter as a state counter to produce a repeating sequence. In the previous video, we used a ring counter to produce a repeating sequence. The ring counter cycled an active signal through its output lines. The cycling of this active line was used to activate the states of a repeating process. In the example used, these states consisted of a repeated lighting sequence of a traffic light. To generate the required sequence, each light was connected through an OR gate to those states for which the light was active. In this video, we will use a binary counter instead of a ring counter. The advantage of using a binary counter is that fewer flip-flops are required. Our four-state example requires a two-flip-flop binary counter, whereas it would need a four-flip-flop ring counter. This advantage increases greatly with the number of states. Thus, a sequence of 32 states would require a 32-flip-flop ring counter, but a five-flip-flop binary counter. The binary counter is in fact optimal. This is because, for a binary code of a given length, the binary counting sequence uses all possible combinations of binary values. We will once more illustrate using a repeating multi-bit traffic signal, red, red-yellow, green, yellow. The state diagram will contain the required output sequence as before. It will also contain the binary counting code for each state. For a four-state sequence, we will need a two-flip-flop counter. This counter will count through the states following the binary counting sequence. To generate the output sequence, we first convert the binary counter into a ring counter. This is implemented by connecting each output of the ring counter through an AND gate to the appropriate Q or Q bar output of each flip-flop of the binary counter. For instance, the S2 state, which has a binary code of 1, 0, will be connected to the Q output for the most significant bit and the Q bar output for the least significant bit. And similarly for all the other states. Remember that for a binary counter, the flip-flop outputs must be read from right to left. This now means that as the counter counts, the lines of the ring counter will be activated in a cyclic manner. The process of converting a code, in this case the binary counting code, into a series of individually activated lines is called decoding. This connection of AND gates, therefore, is called a binary decoder. Now, as before, we use OR gates to generate the output sequence. As in the ring counter example, each output will be connected through the OR gate to those states which activate it. For instance, the red light will be connected to the states S0 and S1. Now, as the counter counts, the lights will light up in the required sequence. If we ignore the binary counter, we see that the remainder of the circuit is a logic array. The logic array was used to implement sum of product or SOP expressions. Each AND gate produces a product term, which are then combined using an OR gate to produce the final output. From what was seen in previous videos, you might observe that each product term is in fact a min term. That is, that each product term 
is the product of all of the inputs, in this case Q0 and Q1, in either original form or in inverted form. This means that in general, it is possible to simplify this array by performing SOP minimization using, for instance, Boolean algebra or a Carnot map. This could greatly simplify our overall design.